Hey everyone, this is Aniwa Mihangos and thank you very much for checking out this video. So we're gonna be talking today about a book that I've actually read twice already and I already plan on reading it a third time because I find it so impactful and I've learned a lot from it and I know that by reading it a third time, I will learn even more things. And so I want to make sure that in doing so, before I read the third time, I wanna make sure that I share some of the contents with you. So if you want to go ahead and read it along with me, there's gonna be a link in the description below. Pick up a copy of the book and take your time and actually read the book. At the end of the day, just like the last chapter in the book says, everything that is in the book is just theory until it's actually put in practice. Nothing will ever replace practice. Nothing will ever replace actual experience. And it's something that I've come to know because there was a time where I would read a lot of books and I believe that that would make me a better salesperson. I believe that that would make me a better marketer a better business person, and that's not the case at all. And I'm sure if you're watching this video, you may have already have that mentality, and that's good. So let's get into the book. So the book that we're gonna be talking about today is called Spin Selling. It is by Neil Rackman. It's a great book. It just provides you some backstory about the book. This is actually more of a compilation of studies and research that Neil did. He has a research company, and he worked with a lot of companies that focus a lot on sales. I have really large sales team. He spoke with the top salespeople. He worked with the bottom salespeople. He saw what they did differently and what made some successful and what others didn't do to not have that same success. After really investigating all kinds of sales, both high ticket and some smaller ticket sales, he established this strategy and he points it out very, very quickly at the very beginning that the strategy, this spin selling strategy, is really meant for higher ticket sales, not for the little things. Things like if you were selling books or if you were selling binders, pencils, things like that. And the reason for it is because he puts a lot of focus on value. He puts a lot of focus on asking certain kinds of questions to the potential prospect and not so much on highlighting certain features and little knickknacks and things like that. Small things that would be highly influential in the sale of a smaller item. So this is why he puts a lot of focus on asking questions, which is essentially what the spin strategy is all about. It's really making sure they ask the correct kinds of questions. And spin at the end of the day is an acronym and it stands for different kinds of questions. Spin stands for situation, problem, implication, need payoff question. All four of them are questions and they all help you get to your end goal, which at the end of the day is a sale. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about why he created this spin selling strategy. Of course, he, like I said before, he was looking at the differences between high ticket sales and the lower ticket sales. Things like binders versus something like, say for example, if you're selling house, if you're a real estate professional, or a car if you're a car salesman. And what he found is that people already have a big mental shift when they're looking into high ticket sales. If they're buying a car, they're gonna be thinking about that purchase very, very differently if they're walking through Walmart and they're looking for a new pen. It's a very different mental state. And once you approach, you as a salesperson, when you approach this kind of sale, you already have to have that in your mind. So when you start approaching, start talking to the potential prospect, you want to make sure that you engage in the correct way with them, already with the question set, so you meet and the certain expectations that they have when it comes to that higher level of a sale. One of my favorite ones is actually what N is, the need payoff questions, because everything else really comes down to exposing the truth about the problem and you highlighting the benefits of your solution. So this is one of the things that I've experienced in the solar industry. A lot of homeowners in the solar industry, a lot of homeowners in general, don't really know that they have a problem with their energy. And I'm sure that you as a salesperson, you've actually encountered this a lot of times. The majority of the people, may not fully understand why your product or your service is so beneficial to them until you really explain to them why their situation is such a bad state and why they desperately should get your product or service as quickly as possible. That is what need is all about. You wanna build up the pain. You want to make sure that they understand that their current situation is not the best because the majority of the times people are so comfortable in the current state that they're okay with it. They're okay with either getting ripped off or they're okay with paying more to get things fixed. It's something similar to a car. People are much more comfortable, they're more likely to fix up the same car multiple, multiple times instead of looking the other way and just buying a new car. So you need to approach it, the need to pay off question in this situation. You want to make sure that you highlight 
All the things that are bad, all the things that are causing them pain, even the things that they may not know are causing them pain, and then shift the focus over to your solution. And this is another key point, which Neil Rackman actually dedicates a whole chapter to. It's about highlighting the benefits, not the features. He explains that features are really only beneficial in a sale when it's a smaller sale. Say for example, if you're selling a binder, you may say this is a three ring binder and this is a two ring binder. This, this, since this one is a three ring binder, it's, it's better. And people may say, okay, yeah, it has an extra ring. I'll go ahead and buy the three ring binder and not the two ring binder. It works for smaller sales. Now, if you're talking about big sales, say for example, a car, you may say something like this car is blue. It has a satellite radio, but this car, this other car is red. It does not have satellite radio. So therefore you should get the blue car. A lot of times, most people will only, won't really see it that way because they may not see a lot of value in getting the satellite radio. So it's a big mental shift. It's not really about features, it's about benefits. Why is this extra feature gonna benefit? How is it gonna benefit the potential prospect? Say for example, in a home, if you're talking about hardwood floors and you're comparing it to a home that has carpet, you wanna sell the, the home that has hardwood floors. If you're talking to parents and you know that they have children, you're gonna, you should be talking about the benefits of hardwood floor, that it's a lot easier to clean up in case children spill some things. If they get something with carpet, it's very, it, gets, it could get very, very dirty, especially if their children are running around in the grass, they come in, they don't take off their shoes. It's a hassle. You want to talk about the benefits, not that just that it has hardwood floor and carpet. Because if you only explain the features, that's all people are gonna be thinking about. Yes, it has hardwood floors, but that's, that's it. What about it? So what? You want to highlight the benefits. You want to increase the amount of value. And remember, at the end of the day, the value should outweigh the cost. If you can make it seem so that the value outweighs the cost, there should be no reason why they shouldn't actually make the purchase of your product or your service. People buy an emotion. That's where the value comes into play. You want to build up. You want to play to their emotions and then people justify the purchase with logic. So, I essentially went through the whole book very, very quickly. That's a very, very quick synopsis. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot more detail in the book. And I encourage you to take the time to pick up a copy, read the book yourself, either if it's a physical copy, do whatever you can to check out the book. It's extremely beneficial, especially if you're involved in high ticket sales. It'll help you a lot, trust me. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed. And be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be making a lot more videos like this. And there's a lot of things that I've experienced in the past two years that I want to explain further in detail in a video similar to this one. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. As always, everyone, until next time, have a fantastic day.